This morning, I like to speak to you on what I titled "Living in Victory." Tell your neighbor, "Living in Victory." I started this series about two weeks ago, and I'm going to continue it today. Living in victory. There is no victory without battle. There is no victory without battle. Whenever you say a man is victorious, it means that man has just encountered some type of challenge. I discovered that challenges are not meant to destroy us but to strengthen us. A man that does not understand the mystery, listen to me, there is a mystery of battle. There is a mystery. If you don't understand why you are fighting, you will lose it. If you discover, even in the United States, they don't engage in a war without a cause. They don't. This country, before they send the military men into any place to fight, they first of all ask themselves, what is the purpose of the battle? Now, when you understand the mystery of battle, it will give you more energy to fight with. I don't know whether you understand. Some of you, the reason why it seems like you have been engaged in a protracted battle and you don't even know the strategy to use it because you don't understand the reason why you are there. If you understand that something is challenging your faith to knock you out of the purpose of God, you will fight with all your strength because you know you don't want your purpose to be derailed. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. I have been in born into a Christian home and I know how my mom jealously guards her children because she understands that there is something unique that God wants to do. So if there is anybody that wants to tempt her son, even though the son does not know my mom will fight. I don't know whether you understand. If the parents of Samson knew that Delilah was about to destroy their son, even if Samson does not know, they will fight Delilah. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever you tolerate can destroy you. I don't know whether you are hearing the sound of my voice this morning. I speak to everything that has been fighting you in 2015. Before the end of this year, they are coming down in the name of Jesus. You didn't hear me. I said I speak to every challenge. Whatever it is that is challenging your faith, whatever it is that is challenging your marriage, in the name of Jesus, I declare God will give you total victory today. If you believe it, let me hear your amen like thunder. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. When we talk about victory, I defeat, define victory as overcoming an enemy or an antagonist. The purpose of the enemy is to destroy. The Bible says Satan has come to steal, kill, and to destroy. John 10, 10, Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it in abundance. What Satan cannot steal, he will kill. What he cannot kill, he will destroy. So hear me this morning. Many people are in one battle or the other. In fact, we are in a spiritual warfare. You've heard that so many times. If God will open your eyes to show you some battles that are facing you, ladies and gentlemen, many of you will not sleep at night. But I have good news for you. Psalm chapter 16. True God. Tell your neighbor, true God, true God. You didn't hear me. The Bible says, true God, we shall gain the victory. I want you to look for three people. Tell them, true God, I shall be victorious this year. Say like you mean, true God, I shall be victorious this year. I said, true God, I shall conquer this year. If you believe me, let me hear your amen this morning. When a man achieves mastery or success in a struggle or endeavor against all odds or difficulties, we say that man is victorious. Whenever something that's supposed to give you joy is not giving you joy, you are in a battle. 
Some of you are not the sound of my voice. The child that's supposed to give you joy is giving you pain. You must fight the good fight of faith. Ladies and gentlemen, there are some battles you must fight. Are, are you hearing me? In Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, the Bible says that God said in his word, he said, I will put an enmity between your seed and the woman. He said, the sword of the woman shall crush your head and you shall bruise his head. God is the one that drew the battle line. Some people say they, are not, they don't have enemies. You are living in ignorance. If the enemy can keep you in ignorance, he can make you impotent. How will a man marry a wife and you cannot get joy from the wife you married? There is something fundamentally wrong. How will a man get married to a woman and that marriage you are lonely? What is the purpose of marriage? God said it is not good for a man to be alone. Whenever something that is supposed to produce a good purpose is not giving you that purpose, you are in a battle. You must fight. This morning, I want you to arrange yourself like a believer and fight the good fight of faith. Every battle you face in 2015, it shall not continue in 2016. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. I said, God will give you total victory. In your marriage, He will give you total victory. In your business, He will give you total victory. If you believe me, let me hear your amen like thunder. Job chapter 14, verse 1. Job said, Every man that is born of the seed of a woman, his days are few. And they are full of trouble. Even the scripture says sufficient for each day. If the evil they are, every day we face challenges. Even the scripture says, it says for every day we are positioned like men for the slaughter. Brothers and sisters, if you allow the devil, he will make sure that you don't succeed. But listen to me. If God said I put an enmity between your seed and the woman's seed, he said you shall cross his head and he shall bruise your hair. You cannot crush the head of the serpent and he still has the ability to bite. So what God is saying there is if you fail to crush, he will bite. I don't know whether you understand. Tell your neighbor, I must fight the fight of faith. Say like you mean, I must fight the fight of faith. I want to share with you four principles. I have to go into the meat of this message. I can't, I can't say the introduction. Listen to me. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, it says, put on the whole armor of God that you will be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. That is to say, the devil has wiles. The devil has weapons. Some of you, the weapon that the devil uses to fight you, he may not fight your spiritual life, but he fights your finances. So when your account is low, you cannot pray. He has automatically fought your prayer life. You don't understand what I'm saying. Some people, it just seems like the wife that they married, things are not going the way it's supposed to go. Their children are not doing well. God gave you that child. That child should do well. When that child is not doing well, the Bible says the blessings of God make it rich and add them no sorrow. So when sorrow is added, it is not from God. You have to tell the devil, take your property back and receive much. You are not in this service. You are not here this morning. I wish you would take back your blessing. I wish you would take back your miracle. I wish you would take back your marriage. I wish you would take back your job. I wish you would take back your health. Wherever you are, open your mouth and say, I take back. I take, I take, I take back in the name of Jesus. That you put on the armor does not mean you know how to use it. I'm not talking about armor. 
you must know how to use it. I started an introduction last time I spoke. I said, God does not rule the world by miracles. He rules the world by principles. There is a principle for every battle. Every battle, there are principles of engagement. If you engage outside of those principles, you will lose the war. Brothers and sisters, many people have these weapons, but they don't know how to use it. Have you ever been in a situation where you thought, God, if you will bless me with money, everything will be okay. And you got the money. And it still seems like some things are still not okay. That is to say, it is not about the blessing. You have to know how to work it. Saul gave David his weapons. David tried to move. David said, ah, I, can, I, I can move with this. Listen to me. Some of you are fighting with other people's weapon. <laughs> Don't pray like that because that may be pastor star. You. Whenever you pray like somebody else, God hears the voice of I hear the voice of Jacob. But that is the skin of Esau. Some of us are confusing God. Because every day we bring new, new strategies. Do you know God has given you the unique strategy? Tell your neighbor, I got the strategy. Come on, come on, tell them I got the strategy. I want to share those four with you. This one. Number one. For you to win the battles of life, you must know God. Your amount of victory is directly proportional to your knowledge of God. The more God you know, the more victory you have. Help me, Holy Spirit. The less God you know, the less victory you have. What did Daniel say? <laughs> Say they that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. You are not permitted to operate for a God that you don't know. The more of God you know, the more victory you win, the more battles you win. My prayer for you is from today, you shall know God. Tell your neighbor, I shall know God, I shall know God, I shall know God. Daniel 11, 32, the Bible says, And such that do wicked against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. He said, But they that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Psalm 144, verse 1. David said, Praise be to the Lord, my rock. David understood God at a dimension and knew God as rock. Why? Because he knew that each time Saul was coming after him, he will hide inside a rock. If you don't know how God is with you, you will not know how to win the battles of life. I don't know whether you understand. That knowledge of God, I'm talking about the revelational knowledge. The revelational knowledge. God must reveal himself to you. David said, he's the one that trains my heart for battle and my feast for war. Why would David say that? Because David was a man that fought battles all his life. But he never lost any. You know why? Because he knew God. I'm going to challenge you this morning on that sound of my voice. You must know this God. Because the more God you know, the more battles you win. Tell your neighbor, you must know this God. How can a man improve? You may say, Pastor, how do I know this God more? Number one, you must be born again. I told you that every victory starts with being born again. It starts with salvation. Any victory that you have that is devoid of salvation is a temporary enjoyment that will soon go bad. Because the greatest thing is eternal life. It's eternal life. Because the battle you are fighting 
that battle should enhance your chances of making it to heaven. I will come to that point. I discovered, let me make this one here now. Hear me. Pastor Bina, I discovered that when the Bible says fight the good fight of faith, it's not every fight that is a good fight. In fact, there are bad fights of faith. It's faith. Have you ever fought and you prayed and you had faith and things did not turn out? Because any battle you fight that will not enhance your chances of salvation and eternal life is a wasted effort. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and suffer the loss of his own soul? Any fight that you are fighting that will not enhance your chances of eternal life, you can lose your soul. Let me break it down. I don't know why God moved me to this tangent. It's down my nose, but let me explain. Let me help you understand. One of such fights was the fight between David and Saul. David and Goliath was a fight of fate. The fight between David and Saul, no wonder David said, I will not touch the Lord's anointed because if he did that, he will enter trouble with God. And at the end of the day, he stands the risk of offending God. Any battle you fight and you think you got victory over someone else that is of the same household of faith and in the process you lose your salvation is a bad fight of faith. Can I preach you this morning? You people suddenly got quiet. Oh. So what I'm trying to make you understand is fight between a fellow brother in church is not a good fight. That this person said this about me. And you begin to keep enmity. I will not greet you. And you begin to pray thunder. God, answer me. Destroy my enemies. God will not destroy. He won't. You know why? We are all God's children. For God's intention is not that any man. Are you with me this morning? Because we have to break some of these things down. Your battle is not against flesh. God already said it. If you are fighting persons, you are fighting the wrong battle. A fight between husband and wife is a bad fight of faith. God said whatever God has joined together. So when you are fighting your wife, you are fighting God. I want to pray. Can I, can I preach to somebody? The Bible says be careful the way you deal with your wife because they are of the lesser vessels. He said because by so doing many have hindered their prayer. Amen. If you like have faith like mountain, if you have not love, you are like a clanging Simba. Eh? Talk to me. Come on church. Talk to me. What I'm making you understand that the battles we're talking about is not the battle against your brother and sister. It's not battle between our church and another church. Any of such battle, we ain't the failure because God is a righteous judge. So the fight we are talking about for you to fight well and you to win, you must know God. And knowing God starts with accepting Jesus. As your Lord and Savior. Starts with being born again. Accept him into your life. Number two. So that I can go fast. The way you can know God. After accepting his son. Is to remain in him. Jesus said. If I remain in you. And my word. He said if you remain in me. And my words remain in you. He said ask anything that you will. He shall be given unto you. We have a lot of unplanted believers. Holy anointed. But they don't, have, they don't have any root. Anything can blow them away. No wonder the devil can knock some people. You wonder, they're so spiritual. But they don't have roots inside the ground. How many of you like that? There's no place where their spirit man is fed. Because you know what? Sometimes the enemy will come like a wind. Some things will want to blow you and uproot you. But if you are solidly rooted, listen to me. If the enemy shall come like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall raise a stamp that he can sell. You need to be planted. That planting involves letting the word of God dwell in you. 
richly. Because God is his word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was God. And the word was with God. The same was the beginning with God. Through him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness comprehends him not. God is light. When God is inside of you, the enemy is darkness. When you have God inside of you, the devil will not be able to predict you. So many believers are too predictable. The devil can predict some people. Any little thing, the devil knows he can press your button. If you are a believer that the enemy can press your button, you are a defeated one. Oh, you don't understand what I'm saying. Let me help you understand. There are some believers, when anything happens, they react like unbelievers. The devil knows how to aggravate you. All of a sudden, your flesh will come out. That means you need more of God inside of you. So what am I saying? You must know this God. And how do you know this God? By accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Number two, by having his word dwell in you richly. Then that is when you can now say, with God, we shall do valiantly and we can trample our enemies underfoot. Principle number two, how can I, as a child of God, walk in victory, live in victory? Now listen to me. It is one thing to have victory and to enjoy it every day. What I'm talking about is not just win one. What I'm talking about is on a daily basis, you are living in victory. It doesn't matter whether the devil comes on Monday, comes on Tuesday, or public holiday. You are a winner. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about, living in victory. Whether the devil comes to marriage, whether the devil comes to your job, that you are living in victory. How? What is the principle? Number one is knowing God. I know this God very well. They that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. Number two, you must know your identity in Christ. Tell your neighbor you must know your identity. Say like you mean it, you must know your identity. Say like you mean it again, you must know your identity in Christ. Listen to me, if you don't know who you are, you will fall for anything. Listen to me, in battles, one of the first ways and first principles in battle. You must be able to know which army you belong. Some people, they are acting as believers. They say they are believers. But the way they live their life, they live like the enemy. Are you hearing me? If you are a believer that does not pray, and you are a believer that does not read the word of God, what makes you different from a non-believer? You just have a form of godliness. And you deny the power thereof. Are you hearing me this morning? So you must understand that there's an identity that you have in Christ. What was the scripture talking about in the book of John? He said, for as many that receive him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. For you to win the battles of God, you must be on God's side. God cannot defend you in battle if he cannot see himself in you. I don't know whether you understand. God cannot fight for you except he sees his soul in you. Why you are born again is so that Jesus can reign inside your life. So when you live your life every day like an unbeliever and you are identified with the people of the world, once you identify with the devil, you are a captive of the devil. The only people that are free, that have entered the kingdom of Jesus Christ and are free, for whosoever the Son of Man has set free, is free indeed. The only free people are believers. Every person in the camp of the enemy is in bondage. So hear what I'm saying to you, that your identity in Christ is very important. Tell your neighbor your identity in Christ. Say like you mean like a preacher, your identity in Christ is very important. John 1, 12 says it. As when I receive him, to them he gave power to become sons of God. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. For all who are led by the Spirit of God. The Bible says these are the sons of God. You have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again. But you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry, Abba, Father. Part of your identity also is that you are a son of God. Tell your neighbor, I'm a son of God. Say that you mean I'm a son of God. When you have the identity as a son, you have authority. That's why he said as men are receiving to them, he gave power to become sons. Because as a son, you have access to your father's wealth. You have access to your father's property. You can tell the angels in the name of Jesus, go and they will go. 
But when you are not a son of God, you cannot command the angels to go. The Bible says children are not, they are still under the servants. The servants still lead them. But when you are a son, you have the authority to command. Hear me. You must operate as a son. Tell your neighbor you must operate as a son. And listen to me, in the kingdom of God, there are no daughters. We are all sons. <laughs> are you hearing me? Tell your neighbor, I'm a son, I'm a son, I'm a son. In the realm of the spirit, there are only sons. God has also made us peculiar people. Tell your neighbor, I am peculiar. First Peter chapter 2. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. God's own possession. He said that you may proclaim the excellencies of God. So who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous I like in James Version that said God has made us a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. So when you are speaking, you are speaking as a priest. A priest, you can command things to happen and they begin to happen. A royalty that the word of the king, the word of the king is a priest power. Kings rule by decrees. So when you pray, you say, I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus, this situation must change. Because you understand that you are a royal priesthood. The devil has no, no other authority than to live. Your child is sick. You lay hands on your child. In the name of Jesus, receive healing. Receive healing because you know you are a royal priesthood. Tell your neighbor I'm a royal priesthood. A peculiar people, a holy nation. Called out of darkness into his marvelous life. What an identity do we have in Christ that we can use to walk in victory. We must be people of a sound mind. Listen to me. When your mind is deranged, you cannot function properly. When your mind is what? Let me tell you, a lot of people, they are spiritual giants, but they walk like spiritual puppets. The Bible talks about we knowing the free gifts that God has given to us by his spirit. If you don't know that you are a child of the king, you will walk like an ordinary man. When you know you are a child of the king, when you place a demand on something, you know you will receive it. I don't know whether you understand my point. The king, the child of a white house, the person that lives in the white house, the president of the United States of America, does not need to take permission from the secret service to go home. I don't know whether you understand. The, the child of President Obama does not need to take permission from secret service to talk to her father because she has access Listen to me, you are a child of God. No, you don't need to take permission from anybody to talk to God. God, tell yourself, tell yourself, I'm a child of God. You're a child of God. You're a child of God. You're a child of God. And once you know that you're a child of God, you can, you can claim some special privileges that belongs to you. God said we must be people of some mind. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 to 7. He said, therefore, I put this in remembrance of you, that thou step up the gift of God which is put into you by the laying on of hands. He says, for God has not given you the spirit of fear. But he has given you the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. You have a sound mind. You, are not, you shouldn't be afraid. When you don't have a sound mind, when you apply for a job, you say, well, I don't know whether they will take me or they will take me. You know, only God knows. Ah, I've said it in this place. You know, there's a way you would dress up if you want something. There was a day I was trying to buy a car from a dealership. I entered the place. Each time I enter. They look at me like this one is not serious. They just look at me like I'm not serious. So you know what God told me? God, listen to me. You must know, you must behave like the child of a king. A child of the king that behaves like an ordinary person will be treated like an ordinary person. That day, God told me, dress up. I dressed up. He said, Look good. Package yourself, spray some good cologne. He said, you think I'm joking? I'm talking about living in victory. God said, Go and wash that car. When you enter that place, because listen to me, I always, you, you were a witness. I always went with someone that I felt could speak for me. In fact, when I went with someone, when they look at the person and look at me, they think we are not serious. In fact, the price, I still remember, they priced me and my wife's car less than the, the value of my, even my wife's car. Like they priced my mother and they priced my wife's Nissan. They priced both of them less than 5000 If you like, take. If you like, don't take. I, I looked at the man. I almost wept. I said, do, do you know? They said, sir, if you want to take, you can take. They, they, they left me. They walked out. So God told me, the reason why you have not gotten an answer is because you don't know who you are. Listen to me. I know we keep reading Bible. Let me give you physical testimony. 
I enter that place. He says, pray. Don't even tell the person that went with you. Don't tell them you are going. You go by yourself. He told me, go online and go on this day. He said, I will commission somebody to be there for you. Hear what I'm telling you? He said, when you enter that place, say you want to speak to the manager. Don't be looking for ordinary people. Kings talk to the bosses. The reason why you are at that level is because you've been playing with some small people. If you are destined for the top, you talk to people at the top. You didn't hear me. Tell your neighbor, I am destined for the top, for the top, for the top. I entered that place that morning. I said, I want to speak to the manager. They said, manager, here I come. I said, sir, show me your vehicles. They look, you know, they say, where they are talking. Show me, show me. I told him, there's one that I have sent. I said, this is the price. I will pay for it. He said, what is your trade? I brought the same vehicle that I've been taking to every way. Listen to me, I lie not. Before I left home, God asked me, how much do you want to sell the vehicle? I gave God a price. By the time they gave me the trade, they gave me more than my trade. What I thought I was having. When I bought the car, I bought it for 11000 By the time they took, I used it for over five years. By the time they took the car for me, they took it for 9000 something. I lied not as a servant of God. When I entered there, the man told me, behold your new car. Sign the documents. I entered the car. I tell him, God bless you. I come back again. I drove out with my car. This morning, I'm speaking to you as a servant of God. Tell your neighbor, I am a child of the king. There is no room for small business. Oh, you didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. That I am a child of the king. I am a child of the king. I am not small. I am great. My destiny is great. If you believe me, let me hear your amen like thunder. Listen, I'm telling you, I'm not telling you a joke. It happened to me. The house I live in, the same thing. I've been looking for small, small houses. Whenever you are looking for small things and they don't give it to you, don't go smaller, go higher. <laughs> you didn't hear me, you didn't hear me. Lebayatata. If they tell you no in 2015, go higher in 2016. It shall work for you. I tell you, it shall happen for you. If you believe it, wave your hand and shout, yes, yes. Listen to me. This one I'm going to say it so that I can close. Sister Fanes, so that we can dedicate your baby. I'm trying to preach this message, but God is just, God wants to address something today. Listen to this. By the time I close the service, if you are believing God for a last minute miracle, I want you to line up here. As the Lord live it, 2015 will not swallow your breakthrough. <laughs> Sir, God gave me a principle. Whenever you have talked to this lady and they say no, they think you are not worth it. Look for an upgrade. This, this is a very prophetic word. Hear me. Some people marry low. I'm telling you. Any, anyone that comes, you will just go. So, anyone that comes, you will just go. Are you, are you hearing me this morning? You apply for a job. They said, oh, $9.50. They will not give you the job. Go and apply for $15. Ah, you didn't hear me. I'm telling you. Many of you are looking at me. You think, I'm not, I'm telling you a prophetic word. The place where, when they are intimidating you on the job, go look. Mayaka tosobaya. Package that resume. Anoint it with oil. Release it. But Mayada Mayalata. Let him Revelation chapter 1 and verse 6. The Bible says he has made us kings and priests unto the most high God. Are you hearing me? I'm going to close with this. He has made us kings and priests. Why did he say kings and priests? Kings rule. 
kings, they rule. He said they have made us kings and priests. In the scriptures, in the Old Testament, kings are known as rich people. Priests, they just know them. They are only serving in the church. Just be serving. But they are the ones that are not kings. Yes. Yes. Are you hearing me? So, when God saw that some people, the thing is divided in Genesis, in Leviticus, kings and priests, he came to the end of the matter. He said, let us combine the two. He promotes you and makes you a king and gives you priesthood to preserve the kingdom. Oh, you are not in church. Are you hearing me? So that you are a king and you sit upon the throne. Every king has a throne. But it takes the priest to maintain the throne. So therefore, as God elevates you this year, nobody can remove you from that room. Right up to your feet, tell your neighbor, I am elevated, I am elevated. I am a king. I am a priest. 